Hey, welcome back to Baird Squid. In this video, we're going to be learning about distance time graphs. Coming up. So in our first question, it says the graph alongside indicates the distance a cycle must travel to work. Use a graph to determine the following questions. Pause the video here and read through the questions so you're familiar with what we're going to cover in this section. So part A, it says work out the distance to work. So the y-axis represents the distance the cyclist must travel to work in kilometers, which means that at zero, he's at home. And here we can see that the maximum distance he must travel to work is 12 kilometers. So for part A, we can say that the distance to work is 12 kilometers. Likewise, part B, we can see from the graph that the maximum time is 26 minutes. So then we can say that the time taken to get to work is 26 minutes. So there's two parts to question C, and it says the distance traveled after 10 minutes and 17 minutes. So the units along the x-axis measure the time in minutes. So if we find 10 minutes here and we go up to the line and across, we can see that we're traveling about four and a half kilometers. So therefore, after 10 minutes, we've traveled 4.5 kilometers. In the same way, we can find the 17th minute on the x-axis, which is about here, and we can draw a line up to the graph and across, and we can read off the y-axis that we have about 8.5 kilometers. So after 17 minutes, the cyclist has traveled 8.5 kilometers. Part D is basically the opposite. It's asking the time taken to travel 6 kilometers and 10 kilometers. After 6 kilometers, we can read across to find out how much time's taken. So in this case, we can say traveling 6 kilometers will take 14 minutes. And likewise, after 10 kilometers, you can see that we've traveled a total of 19 minutes. Part E is the most difficult part. It says find the average speed of the whole distance. So I'm going to share a formula with you. You use it in physics as well. Its speed is equal to distance divided by time. So in order to find the average speed of the whole distance, we need to find the total distance divided by the total time. So in parts A and B, I worked at the total distance and the total time taken. So I can do speed is equal to 12 kilometers divided by 26 minutes. Now, if I worked that out on a calculator, I would get 0.46 kilometers per minute. However, conventionally, you don't see kilometers per minute. You usually read it as kilometers per hour. So if we multiply this value by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, we will get a total of 27.7 kilometers per hour. So the next example, we're going to continue to work on the average speed. So it says the graph represents Kathleen's distance from home. Calculate her average speed. Now remember what we said. We said speed is equal to distance divided by time. So we need to work at the total distance traveled in this graph and then divide it by the total time that we have. However, be careful when reading distance time graphs because you'll see in this example, Kathleen is traveling home, then she travels away from home, and then she's resting, and then she's traveling to home again. So if we add up all of the distances, we've got this leg that represents 50 kilometers. The next leg represents 30 kilometers. Then we have a stationary point, which means she's not moving anywhere. The next leg represents a movement of 60 kilometers. And the final leg represents a movement of 40 kilometers. So we need to add all of those together. So we need to divide that by the total time. So 9 a.m. to noon is three hours. And then from noon to 4 p.m. is going to give us four hours. So that's a total of seven hours. So therefore, if we divide 180 by seven, we will get 25.71 kilometers per hour. Okay, stick with us in the last example because we're going to be talking about the rate of change and working out the gradient of a line. Okay, so in this question, it says, from the time you hold your breath, the amount of carbon dioxide in your body starts to increase. The graph shows the change in carbon dioxide levels over time from when the breath is held. The question is, at what rate is the carbon dioxide level increasing per second? So we need to remember from previous videos that the rate of change is equal to the gradient of a line. 
which basically is the rise over the run. Now by choosing a suitable point on the graph, we can find the rise over the run. Here you can see that we have a rise from 0 to 40, and we have a run from 0 to 200. Now be careful to pay close attention to the axis labels, because here it says CO2 levels in thousands. So we have 40,000 divided by 200. That's going to simplify to 400 over 2, which is going to give us 200 carbon dioxide levels per second. As always, thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, drop me a like. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe for more math videos. And I'll see you in the next one.